Welcome to the Recess Volunteer Training. Thank you so much for taking the next 15 minutes to get yourself acquainted with the policies, procedures, and other expectations Recess Islington has to make a safe, fun night for all. The outline of the presentation. We're going to review the leadership team, what is Recess, the schedule, our top five policies, additional policies, and risk management. Who we are. We are your leadership team. The Islington Recess leadership team helps to ensure recess is a safe, smooth, and fun night for all. We are available for any questions you may have. And if you are not comfortable, we are not comfortable. When it comes to recess, there's no reason to suppress fears and tough it out. We want to help you be confident in your ability to work with the child you are paired with. Please don't shy away or feel bad for letting us know that a particular child diagnosis or pairing makes you feel uncomfortable. We want to know this information and we count on you to let us know. It will not offend anyone and it will only serve for a better experience for all. Who we are, Michelle Allen. She's a special education teacher at Glen Forest Secondary School, has over 15 years of experience of community work with families of kids and teens with special needs, is a mother of five-year-old twins, a country music enthusiast, and an Ironman triathlete. Stephanie Collins is a Toronto District School Board special education teacher, is a past special education consultant, a former IBI therapist, and also a mom of two daughters, five and seven years old, and a long distance runner. What is Recess? Recess is a once per month respite program that offers free care to children with disabilities and their siblings while their parents enjoy a night out. It is a fun-filled evening of activities that kids love. There will be a one-to-one -one volunteer ratio for children with disabilities to ensure that they are safe and engaged in things that they enjoy. Siblings will be under a watchful eye of the volunteers and some people will be also paired with them, making sure they're being engaged in conversation and finding functional things and fun things to do. The schedule of the night. At four o'clock, volunteers like yourselves will arrive. At, uh, during this time, we will set up, debrief about uh, the evening, go through parent packages, and of course, we'll eat. At five o'clock, families arrive. At five to 6.30, there'll be free movement through activities, including crafts, playrooms, sensory rooms. 6.30 to seven o'clock, there'll be a group activity. Games and activities will be adapted so that everyone can participate. And at seven to 7.15, we'll start get to get into pajamas and have a snack. 7.15 to 9 o'clock will be a uh, cool down and a movie time and quiet time. So we will, uh, you know, and parents will begin to pick children up shortly. 9 o'clock is the cutoff home time and then volunteers will help tidy up and everyone will leave for 9.30. The top five policies include one, food, medicine, medical emergencies, parent package, and toileting. Number one, food. All children are allowed to eat food they bring with them. They are not allowed food from the volunteer meal or any other source. Please let the leadership team know if a child has no food. Two, medicine. Any and all medications are not to be distributed by volunteers. Parent release for medication administration is mandatory. EpiPens. Please review this visual. It outlines severe symptoms and mild symptoms for an allergic reaction and when to inject epinephrine and when to call 911. The five emergency steps with an allergic reaction include one, give epinephrine or the EpiPen at the first sign of an allergic reaction. Two, 
Call 911 or your local emergency services and tell them that someone is having an anaphylactic reaction. 3. You can give a second dose of epinephrine as early as 5 minutes after the first dose if there's no improvement in symptoms. 4. Go to the nearest hospital right away. Even if symptoms are mild or have stopped, the reaction could get worse or come back after using epinephrine. You should stay in the hospital to be observed, generally about 4 hours. 5. Call the emergency contact person. Continuing with EpiPens, if you are administering EpiPen to a young child, hold the leg firmly in place while administering an injection. Place the orange tip against the middle of the outer thigh at the right angle to the thigh. Swing and push the auto injector firmly until it clicks. Please take a moment now to review this video on how to administer an EpiPen. 3. Medical Emergencies In the case of a medical emergency, please notify the designated on-site medical professional present that day. In case of a fire, know your exits. We can review these uh, when volunteers arrive and over dinner. In the case of um, other emergency situations, follow the emergency plan as well as sp site-specific plans. The leadership team as well as the on-site contact will know and have access to the emergency plan. The parent package. All one-to-one -one volunteers must look over the parent package for the child they are paired with prior to the child's arrival. Before a family can start participating at recess, they must fill out a parent package, which provides information pertaining to their child's needs. Before families arrive at recess, we will have some designated time to see who you're paired with and review that package. If you have any questions, please let us know. 5. Toileting <clears throat> If there is someone who requires a diaper change, two people will assist, a training uh, uh, toileting person and another volunteer. If a child requires assistance, a toileting person and another volunteer will assist. If no assistance is required but supervision is, is required, just two volunteers are needed to support. And if there's no assistance required and no supervision required, a volunteer can wait outside the individual washroom. There will also be a sign-in and out form of the washroom to ensure it's always tracked for your safety and the safety of the child. Abuse prevention. We want recess to be a safe place for our children and our volunteers, and we are required to report abuse. It is very important to recognize the signs of abuse to keep our kids safe, and it is important to avoid the appearance of abuse to keep our volunteers safe. Types of child maltreatment, physical abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, and emotional maltreatment. Abuse prevention, what to say? Action one, acknowledge the situation. Action two, comfort the child and ensure their safety. Action three, report to the leadership team immediately. Avoid the appearance of abuse. Volunteers are never to be alone at any time with any child in any room. Follow toileting policies. Use toileting sign-in sheet and use appropriate touch. Which of the following is an example of appropriate touch? Hold a preschooler who's crying. Kiss or coax a child to kiss you. Hold a child's hand when walking to an activity. Extended frontal hug. High five. Pat on the back, head or shoulder. Hold a child's face when walking or disciplining. Carry older children or allow them to sit in their lap. Out of this list, appropriate touch would be considered holding a preschool who is crying, holding a child's hand when walking to an activity, giving a high five, and patting a child on the back, head, or shoulder. Abuse prevention. Report, report it, record it, or ignore it. When playing soccer, two boys run for the ball and accidentally bump into each other. They both have bumps on their head. In this situation, you'd want to report it and record it. An eight-year-old girl shares information about someone at home touching her in a way that makes her feel uncomfortable. 
In this situation, you'd want to report it and record it. The seven-year-old boy you are paired with doesn't have a snack or any food with them and says he's hungry. In this situation, you'd want to report it to the leadership team right away. Additional policies. Social media and technology, quiet areas, classroom safety, sickness and illness policy. Social media and technology. Tell all the world about how awesome Recess Islington is, but do not post any names of participants. Do not post pictures of children online. There sh will be a recess photographer on site, and there will be no cell phones once the program begins. Quiet areas. Some children may have sensory issues or anxiety. Check the parent package and don't be afraid to ask questions. Locate the designated quiet areas and keep these areas quiet and calm. Room safety. Check rooms for obstructions. Look out for toys that could become a risk. Use developmentally age-appropriate toys. Ensure supply closets are locked or secured. Wash hands often, even if you use gloves. And know where the first aid kit, gloves, and hand sanitizers are. Sickness and illness policy. We have a 24-hour rule. Make sure that you are free of any illness for 24 hours before returning to Islington recess. If you are sick, please notify us as soon as possible. Remember, we have medically fragile children and a cold for them could mean a big deal. Risk management. We're going to review the parent package, the advisory professional, medical professional, and the emergency plan. Parent package is filled out by each family prior to being dropped off. It's child specific. Volunteers will look over the package before the family arrives. Note the needs and the interests of the child, and this allows you to be the expert on the child you're paired with to make sure you have a fun, fun, safe, fabulous night. Risk management, what would you do? Tommy has autism and the parent package mentions that he does not respond well to loud noises. Martha has cerebral palsy and uses a walker to help her get around when she walks. Lance is prone to bite when he gets excited. Review this table to see the answers of those questions. Advisory professional. An advisory professional looks over each parent package before the family is invited to recess. One child could be big changes. There will be on-site medical who will also review the parent package of the event to become familiar with all children and their needs. This is the go-to emergency contact person at our event. The emergency plan. In the event of emergency, I give recess staff or any emergency medical professional permission to transport my child to the nearest hospital for medical treatment in the event that I cannot be located. I can send for necessary emergency treatment by the medical staff for my child in the event I cannot be reached to make arrangements at the time of illness or accident. Risk management. These are the medical emergency steps. One, notify on-site medical contact immediately. Two, clear the area except for the leadership and persons assisting. Three, the leadership will decide if the individual goes to the hospital and what volunteers will accompany them or if we wait for parents to arrive. Four, if a hospital or medical professional is required, the leadership team will decide whether parents are going to transport the child to the hospital or we call 911. Five, the leadership team contacts parents. We will make sure that information on the decision is ready and we'll, we'll be ready to describe the current status of their child. Six, once the situation is handled, make a written account of the situation, how it occurred, and what steps were taken. Remember, clear the area, transport or 911, contact the family, and then write it down. Don't forget to complete your training. Make sure you complete the questions on the following slide and submit them. Thank you so much. We could not run Recess Islington without you, our volunteers. Congratulations on completing the recess training. Here are the three answers we want you to email to recessislington at gmail.com. Thank you again so much. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email or call. Thank you, and we look forward to meeting you.